One reason I'll always recommend purchasing a semi-pro or pro audio interface is this little thing called audio latency. Yes, even in 2012, we're still dealing with this problem while recording and mixing. Latency, according to dictionary.com, is the time required to locate the first bit or character in a storage location expressed as access time minus word time. If you're familiar with online video games and have experienced what's referred to as lag, you know exactly what bad latency is. If your interface has significant latency, overdubbing is impossible, playing to a click track or metronome is impossible, and playing virtual instruments like MIDI is also impossible. Because there's always a delay in the signal and everything will get cluttered up. Not good. Not good at all. Unfortunately, the easy answer isn't just set the buffer to the lowest setting, because if you do that, you're going to get audible clicks and pops in your audio track. So what's the best way to obtain low latency? First, as I mentioned before, is buying a prosumer or professional interface. PCI or PCI Express is the best, but modern USB and Firewire audio interfaces work almost as well. Some, if not most by now, feature what's called zero latency monitoring, which allows you to hear playback before audio conversion. Some also have built-in processing, which allows you to monitor, say, vocals with reverb or delay, but record a dry, unaffected signal. Once you've settled on a decent audio interface, the next crucial step is to disable or close unnecessary programs and operating system services. In the video description, I've linked to several tweak guides. Some of them may refer to tweaking for video programs, but they work just as well for audio programs at reducing unnecessary CPU usage. Some other tips I have for you, if you're recording with plugins on, Try to disable ones that aren't necessary, like EQ that can be applied later, or if you have plugins that have a high quality mode or they have oversampling, turn oversampling off, put the quality mode to low. If you absolutely need to hear an effect and you don't have a plugin that has zero latency, you can get cheap outboard gear that'll allow you to monitor with the effect but not record with it. Or, like I said, if you have a newer interface, most of them have built-in DSP that, you know, they don't really sound great, but you can at least hear it, or the person you're recording can hear it. Also, keeping your interface's drivers up to date is always recommended. A lot of times, you'll be able to get lower latency just from upgrading your drivers. Sometimes, your latency problems may come from your DAW. Yes! There are certain recording programs, which shall go unnamed, that just suck. They might not play well together with your particular interface, and that's a shame, but it happens. And then there's just programs that, no matter what interface you have, just suck, period. That's one reason I use Reaper for my doll, because with every interface I've thrown at it, it doesn't have many problems. It pretty much works. What I'm trying to say is, if you've tried all the tips that I've said during this video and you still are having problems, switching to another recording program may help considerably. So once you tweak your computer and close all programs, now you can experiment with your interface's buffer size setting. Choose the lowest one and record a track. I like to run a test tone with this cable checker and that works pretty well, but recording with anything pretty much will show you an audio pop. You can even just strum a guitar and something is bound to show up. The goal is to be able to record without any audible clicks. You don't want clicks in your recordings. That's ridiculous. And another thing you can try is I recommend recording at higher sampling rates, but if your computer can't handle it, then 441 or 48 kilohertz you might have to go that route, unfortunately. If you're on a tight budget though, and everything I've said about buying a prosumer or professional interface just is not in the realm of possibilities, 
and you have to use the built-in sound card on your computer, there is hope. There's a program called ASIO for All that will allow you to take advantage of the lower latencies that the ASIO format offers. The link to that program is in the video description. So far we've covered buffer settings while recording, but for mixing and mastering, just go ahead and set that buffer to a really high setting because you know a little lag in playback isn't really an issue. And once you start adding a lot of plugins, your playback will start clicking, it'll become annoying, it might even crash. So just set that buffer high and you'll be good. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.